Hey, it's Tony from Adafruit, and this is a quick look at Volumio, or Volume.io. It's a music player for the Raspberry Pi, and it's basically an operating system that you load onto your Raspberry Pi, and it turns it into a, like a network-controlled music player, so you can point it at the music files that are on your network, like if you have a network attack, uh, attached storage device. Uh, you point it at that, and then like from your phone or from your laptop or from your computer, you can control it and say, okay, I want to play this album, uh, play like a radio station, stuff like that. So I thought we'd look at something interesting. Uh, Volumio, it's been around for a little while, and uh, I think they're on version 1.0 is kind of the official release, but they've been working on a big rewrite of it uh, for version 2.0. It looks like they're changing like the whole back end to be Node.js based uh, instead of PHP and things like that, so probably things that'll be more scalable for them. And they have a, a release candidate, RC2, that just came out a few days ago. I noticed on the Reddit Raspberry Pi uh, page uh, mention of it. So I thought I'd check it out and just see what's in this new Volumio 2.0 release. Uh, see how it works, what it looks like, and you know what you can do with it. And again, remember, this is a release candidate, so you know it's not final software. Uh, I'm sure once this is released, you know maybe there'll be bugs and things that'll be fixed. Uh, and so and you'll see, I, I ran into a few little small bugs and things with it. Uh, but let's just kind of dive in. We'll get started with it and see what we've got here. So I'll switch to kind of the main view real quick. Uh, and so let's see, in the upper right here, uh, you'll see why I have the zoom down a little bit. So there's something interesting that I wanted to play with um, after I, I show off the software. Right here I have a Pi, this is the Pi 3, but it doesn't really matter the type of Raspberry Pi that you're using. I'm sure this would work just fine on a zero uh, or things like that. But you do want to have some type of audio output from the Pi. Like, uh, you know, on the Pi 3 here, you've got the analog audio jack right there. And on the Pi 2, you've got that. Uh, for like a Pi Zero, you'd have to use like a USB audio adapter, which means you then you need a USB on the go adapter, and then you probably need a USB hub and all that stuff for it. So just be aware that it's not completely plug and play. Uh, another cool thing though, so what I do have hooked up to this, this little red board over here that's a little tough to see, uh, this is the I2S amplifier that we have in the store. This is a prototype version, that's why it's on a red board uh, for, for, uh, from the shop. But I'll put a link in below. It's the Max 31, uh, or Max, oops, sorry, uh, covered up, 98357A uh, I2S amplifier breakout. You can see pretty inexpensive, but the cool thing is you can hook this up to a Raspberry Pi. And if you look at the learn guide on this, uh, there's a link to it right here. It walks you through step by step. And just with a little bit of configuration, you can tell the Raspberry Pi to use this I2S amplifier as the audio output. So if you play music from your Pi or just any kind of sound effect, it will be output by this amplifier. And then the amp, it just hooks directly up to a small speaker. So I think it's a three watt amplifier. Uh, so, you know, it's, which, which is actually pretty loud if you get enough, a high enough efficiency speaker. Uh, you know, you see all these audio systems today to like hundreds of watts of power. And sure, if you're driving like massive 12 inch subwoofers, maybe you need a lot of power, but just to hear audio from a small speaker, you don't need a ton of power for that. Uh, so this is hooked up to a little um, little 8 ohm speaker that I have right here. I'll show you something cool that I'm going to play with in a little bit though. Uh, so, you know, but that that's what I have hooked up here to get audio, and I have it hooked up this way because for some reason I can't get the analog audio to work with the current RC2 uh, of Volumio. I think it's an ALSA issue. It looks like it's not using ALSA mixer where it should be, and so maybe it's not routing audio uh, audio out correctly. But I did get it to work with the I2S amp, so uh, that's why I'm going to show this off. Uh, but anyways, and like I said, I'll put down in the uh, description below links to all the web pages and products and things that I mentioned. So when this goes up on YouTube, you can check them out and see uh, what I looked at. So this is the homepage for Volumio, and it uh, just kind of mentions, you know, the high points. It's it's an entire OS, although it's based on like Debian and Raspbian, uh, but you load it on your Raspberry Pi, and it's all set and pretty much ready to go out of the box to turn the Pi into a network music player. Uh, and so they talk about some of the high points here. You know, you have a lot more control. You can control it from any device in your network. Uh, it works with a lot of these I2S amplifiers. So like this little one that we have in the shop, this is just a little monophonic amplifier, uh, good for like cosplay and like real simple little applications, you know, where you need just a small audio output. 
uh, but there are much fancier i2s based audio uh, systems for the raspberry pi like there's some hats that you can plug in that have really high quality uh, DACs or digital to analog converters that basically take the digital signal because i2s is a digital audio signal so it's you know if you look at it uh, on an oscilloscope you're not going to see an analog up and down you know sine wave type signal you're going to see real fast uh, high speed digital kind of pwm signals here because it's basically telling this amplifier you know here's a digital bit stream of audio data at some bit rate you know like 16 bits 24 kilohertz uh, and then this amplifier actually decodes that and turns it into analog audio that pipes directly into a speaker here. Uh, but because you have that digital transport, that digital link, you can have pretty high quality audio. It really just comes down to what you have attached to the Raspberry Pi and what kind of quality uh, it supports. So like, you know, does it support 24 bit audio at like 192 kilohertz, like pretty fancy stuff that audio files might uh, classify. And so that's the cool thing. You can just plug in some of those shields uh, and I'll put a link. There's also, we have the Pi Maroni Fat DAC, uh, which is made for the Pi Zero, but can work on anything. And it's really similar to this uh, little I2S amp, but this is a nice little stereo uh, amplifier here. And so it does 24 bit audio at 192 kilohertz. That's pretty much as good as you can get these days. Um, I don't think there's a higher audio standard, uh, but you know, I've actually done a blind listening test on myself uh, with headphones, double blind. I used a program that like randomly tested things and I had the 24 bit version of an album and the 16 bit version of an album. And I couldn't tell the difference at all. And these were like nice Sennheiser uh, headphones that I was using. So I, I'm a little skeptical about, you know, uh, audio because if you get a CD, you're getting 16 bit, uh, 44 kilohertz audio, uh, only DVD audio and Blu-ray audio is higher quality. Uh, and I guess maybe these days, digital stuff, if you get like flack. So don't fool yourself thinking that, you know, you'll play your CD music with some fancy DAC and it's going to sound better. Uh, anyways, though, rant aside, uh, Volumio, it's pretty nice. So, uh, this talks a little bit about, you know, the current release. And like I mentioned, it's a 1.0 release that they have right now. I think you can download it and install it. But the RC2 of Volumio 2.0, that's what I wanted to look at. And I'll put a link. The place to get it right now is from their forums. They have a, a, a thread right here. It has a link to an image that you can download, burn it to an SD card and load it up and it's ready to go. And it kind of mentions the current state of it. And it just came out like just a couple days ago. It's the 25th of June. Uh, it's the 27th today. So I figured, you know, hey, let's try it out. It's kind of timely and see what it looks like. Uh, so I've already set it up a little bit and all I did was I downloaded the image. I burned it to an SD card, you know, just using the typical instructions like you're burning Raspbian. And then I just booted it up and I do have a network connection. I have the network cable plugged in to my Pi 3 because I need some way to get it on my network. And luckily, uh, as I booted it up, I kind of watched it has, uh, it'll do an initial setup. It'll resize your SD card and it'll output on the HDMI output, you know, what it's doing. Uh, but it doesn't really have any interface on the HDMI output that I saw. It really is meant to be controlled entirely over the network. So you're gonna need it on your network. I highly recommend using a wired connection for that uh, since it's so easy. And then once you have it up, you just go to HTTP volumio.local. Now this assumes that you have um, Bonjour or the multicast DNS support in your operating system, which if you're using Mac OS X, you do automatically. Uh, Windows, unfortunately, you have to install Apple's printer services for Bonjour. They have a link on the Volumio page, I want to say, uh, to where to get this little XE to install. That'll give you support. Uh, I think Chromebooks support it now. There was a bug that I think they fixed it. Unfortunately, Chrome on Android does not support this .local lookup, which is a bit of a pain. So you might need to find out the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, like look in your router. You know, if you can't use this .local, then use the IP address of your Pi uh, and you can access it. But it boots up and uh, now, like I said, I've configured it a little bit, but it kind of comes just as is like this. You'll see something similar, just it won't have an album um, ready to go and ready to play, obviously. But very nice. Uh, you can tell that they've designed it to be mobile friendly. Like, so if I load it up on my phone uh, that I've got right here, let's see what it looks like uh, on the phone operating system. So, okay, let me go back to uh, this page here. And yeah, so I've loaded up on the phone and you can see like it looks pretty similar. Uh, very nice, clean, you know, modern interface. Uh, they've definitely done a nice job making this look good. So. 
Uh, so that's why it kind of looks pretty simple here. And just overall, as I played with it, I really like it. It is definitely very simple. Like it's, it does have a lot of features, but it kind of keeps it simple as far as like, you point it at your sources of music, it will figure out what the albums are inside of there, assuming that you've probably structured it in a certain way. Um, you know, I didn't really get super advanced uh, at putting a lot of music into it. Uh, but then it, you know, it's, it'll find your albums and then it just gives you a simple interface. Like you can sort through your music and pick an album and play it, which, which is all you need these days. Uh, but it does have some plugins I'll show you too. So uh, if I click in this little corner up here, it's got a bunch of configuration. So I'll just run through the configuration pages. There aren't a ton of them. Uh, the My Music page, this is where you point it at music sources. So it can look for network drives on your network. Um, I don't have any Windows network shares, like a Samba share. I do have a Synology NAS. Uh, I don't think I have it configured for the, uh, for the Samba style shares, which, but if I did have Samba shares, I think it can just automatically find them. Like if you click this add new drive, it will look for other drives. Like I think it found a Volumio drive. So I, I think it's exposing itself as a drive, but I couldn't connect to it. That might be an RC2 issue. Uh, but I just put in the uh, IP address of my Synology NAS and uh, I gave it the path. And then I also configured it. I have NFS, Network File Share, uh, set up. So I switched it to this. Uh, you don't really need a username and password for NFS. It just works on IP addresses. And I just set it up. Uh, and so that's how I got the share down here. And then it was really quick. It just instantly started scanning my share. Now I only put one album on that share right now. And it looks like the format that it expects, whatever share you pointed at, uh, you should have a folder, a top level folder for each, each artist. And then inside of there, a top level folder for each album. And maybe it supports other schemes, but that's the one that it looks like it works with. And I think that's probably the most common scheme. Uh, so real nice and simple. You just add your network sources. Probably good to know though, that it looks like at least in RC2, as far as I can tell, I don't see a local file store system. Now it does mention you can plug in a USB um, like hard drive or things like that. So I'm assuming if I had a USB hard drive connected, it would probably show up in these options and who knows, maybe it would automatically find it or maybe I have to point it to a path on that drive. So just something to be aware of that you could have like a USB drive, but just the Pi alone, I don't think is enough to, uh, to hold your music. And you probably don't want to put all your music on the SD card of the Pi anyways. Uh, so just be aware, you're going to need like at least a big uh, USB drive or network share or something like that set up uh, to use this. Okay, so that's the My Music setup. That's, you know, you've pointed at your music and it was really fast to scan, by the way. Um, you know, I have gigabit uh, ethernet that it was connected to my Synology with, but uh, you know, I initially had a few hundred albums and it was just like a minute or two and it scanned and figured them out. So that was uh, pretty impressive. Now playback options, this is actually really nice. They have a really nice little menu system here. So you can pick which audio output you want. Um, for some, they mentioned there's a bug in RC2 where it's doesn't, it doesn't save this output uh, device. So it said analog jack. It, even though it said that I could never get the analog jack to work for some reason. So again, I think it's a bug in RC2. Uh, but here's a cool thing. So I flipped I2S DAC on, and then you can pick the model of DAC, and they have one for generic I2S DAC. They don't have our uh, Max 9.3 uh, whatever DAC, but because the I2S protocol is pretty generic, uh, like there's nothing really fancy about our DAC, so I just picked the generic uh, one for the option. And then it's got, and when you do click save, and if you do use I2S, it has you restart because it has to manipulate the device tree a little bit to enable that DAC thing. And so that's why it has you restart. Uh, but it did just work. I was really impressed. Like it's really cool that they've put an interface on this and it works, uh, no messing around and it, it, it seems all good. Uh, and then playback options, this is cool. So like it does gapless, it does normalization. That's really nice where if you have really loud so uh, songs and really soft sounds, it tries to normalize them so they're all, you know, roughly within the same kind of range of audio. Uh, it's nice that you can turn that on and off because if, if you really are an audiophile, you probably don't want something messing with your audio. Uh, you can mess with buffer sizes. That's really cool. Mixer controls. This is where, again, I think there's probably a bug in their RC2. I'm assuming this should show like ALSA as my mixer because that's what the Pi is using, but it doesn't show anything here. And because of this, the volume control doesn't work. I'll show you too. So I think this is an RC2 bug, uh, but this, I'm guessing if I had, I don't know, some multiple mixers, like maybe multiple audio cards or something connected, maybe this is where I pick them. Uh, and it's got a few other little options here, but again, simple and pretty straightforward. Uh, it looks like it's, it's not too crazy to, to get going with. 
Um, okay, so that's cool. Let's look at uh, appearance. This is kind of neat too. So they have some little themes here and I think you can even like drag in a background image. Uh, just a nice little touch to do this. Like if I click this galaxy and it loads up the background now is that cool galaxy thing. So that's pretty cool. I, I like that they added that. Uh, you know, it's the little touches like that that are cool and you can change all the colors and stuff. So uh, that's pretty neat. Uh, one of the things they, they said, don't pick the French language right now in this RC2. Apparently that uh, gets rid of like some critical UI elements. So uh, keep it with English. And uh, okay, so let's see, uh, network. This is nice too. So it's got a whole page to configure your network. I'm using the wired network. It tells me my IP address and everything. Uh, really nice. Because I'm using the Pi 3, it seems to know that I have wireless built in and it's even scanning my local wireless network. So if I wanted, I could jump on my network. Really nice. Uh, that's cool. That's really awesome that they've, they've got that kind of interface. Uh, again, like it, it, it makes your Pi like a music playing appliance, uh, which is cool. Like it's, it's a nice thing that you could have multiple Raspberry Pis all around your house and have them all playing things. Uh, just some general settings so you, you can change the name of this thing, which I think would probably change well, the address of it and stuff like that. Uh, it's got a startup sound, which I don't think I've actually heard it because uh, I haven't really reset it a bunch of times. You can update it, all this stuff. So that's really cool. It's nice that they've got all this stuff thought through ahead of time. Uh, and then in the plugin system, so I don't have anything here, but I do notice they have a Spotify plugin. Now, I don't use Spotify, but this is pretty cool that they've got a plugin here, so it's probably worth checking it out. Uh, I don't see any other plugins here. So, you know, again, this is RC2, so it's probably early stuff. I'm sure it'll probably take some time for other plugins to migrate to the new system. Uh, let's see, okay, so what else do we have? Uh, alarm, this is kind of neat. You can add an alarm, and so I can say, okay, you know, at 9 a.m., wake up and, you know, play some playlist. And I don't have any playlists defined right now, but I'm guessing if I did, I could pick one. Uh, so that's a pretty neat little feature. If you had one of these in your bedroom or something, you could have a little alarm clock that uh, wakes you up with some music every day. So that's pretty cool. And then it also has a sleep timer. So this will just let you, you know, power off or stop the music after some amount of time. So again, nice little feature uh, that you can use if you've got this like in a room. Uh, credits, let's just see, uh, hey, look at that, cool. They've got like all the contributors. Wow, this is a really nice credit page. I hadn't seen this before. That's pretty cool. Wow, way to go guys, that's uh, that's a pretty slick thing. So that's neat. And then uh, shut down, they've got a nice little option here if you wanna restart or power off the Pi. So, okay, so that's pretty much all the options. You know, like you saw, it's. It's simple, uh, which I think is a good thing. So, you know, it's not meant to overload you with a ton of options here. Um, and again, it's all web controlled as far as I've seen. Maybe it has like other uh, interfaces, but I think it's really meant to just be, you know, you've got your tablet or your phone or your computer and you talk to this thing. Uh, so, okay, so once you've configured it and you're pointing it at some music sources, uh, you can go back to the main page. And these three tabs down here seem to be kind of the main uh, way that you control this. So you can browse and it's got a bunch of options. So like if I had some playlists and favorites and things, which I don't, uh, then they, those would be there presumably. Your music library, so you can go through and I'm guessing if you had like a hard drive attached, you'd probably see it here. Uh, I have my NAS that I configured and so I only have one album in there, but uh, this is cool. Like it shows, you know, there's the music for it. Kind of nice, it's simple. It's not like overloaded with album art and all this stuff. It's fast also, if you notice, like it's pretty quick to browse through this stuff, so that's cool. Uh, and then it also has uh, web radio stations and uh, I'm not gonna play these just because uh, you know, I don't really uh, don't want to get us kicked off YouTube, but it's cool. It looks like they've got, you know, a whole index of uh, a bunch of web radio. I didn't, I noticed like, um, it was a little weird. I tried to play some of the web radio back and I don't think it was actually playing. And I noticed some mention in their forum. It, again, it might be a little bug in their RC2 uh, for this, but okay. So let's actually play something. Uh, so, and I'll show you, this is the playback interface on the main screen here. So I had gone through earlier and selected Bartle Beats. The queue, this is nice. This shows kind of your now playing queue of, you know, here's what's gonna play and then here's the stuff that comes after it. So it looks like you can kind of manage everything here. Real slick and again, like this, this works on a phone. Oops, I don't wanna drag that around. So, you know, if you, you're on a small little device, it, it's responsive, it looks like it scales itself. So that's pretty cool. Uh, okay, now in the playback, it has volume control right here. But again, I like I mentioned, this isn't actually working for me, and I think it's a mixer bug in their RC2, uh, but it's nice, it's kind of pretty and slick. Uh, this is showing kind of where I'm at in the album, and obviously if I click this, you can probably hear uh, the speaker here, it's playing audio. So again, that's using I2S, I'll turn that off. 
Uh, that's using I2S, so the, the Pi, the Raspberry Pi, is sending a digital audio signal to this little amp board, and then that board is decoding it and uh, amplifying the signal and sending it to the speaker there. Uh, so really nice and simple. Like it just shows the album art. There's a cover.jpg in the folder uh, that's in here. So, you know, that seems to work. Looks like, I guess I can probably favorite this. So yeah, now that's added to my favorites. Um, let's see, what does the plus do? I didn't click that. Oh, I can put it in a playlist. Okay, uh, how about fun stuff? Let's make a new playlist. Uh, okay, cool. So that just added that to the playlist. And then this, um, oh, interesting. Oh, wow, so this is kind of cool. I didn't see these features before. Uh, so it looks like I can go to the album. So yeah, there we go. There's a frequency album. And uh, oh, interesting. So it looks like it just did a search for frequency uh, and then it found the album here. Uh, and then if I want to cue this up, I can click this little thing and you know cue it up or play it or do things like that or add it to a playlist. Um, so that's cool. It seems like that stuff works. So you know, as far as I can tell, like they've got the basics. Uh, I wouldn't even say the basics. You know, they've got a very nice little audio player here. I like the simplicity. Uh, I like the way it looks. Like very nice, clean interface. Uh, so this is pretty cool. Like I, it seems like this is good enough to just get ready and 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 start using it. Uh, like I said, though, I you know I couldn't get the analog output to work. I didn't try any USB audio output, so maybe that might work. Uh, the I2S does work, which is pretty cool. That's a nice little feature uh, for this. So uh, that's pretty much all there is to show with Volumio uh, the RC2 right now. Uh, but what I wanted to do next, so let me switch to the main shot. And if folks have questions or anything, throw them into the chat. Uh, so I had a fun project idea. I found a neat thing at a thrift store. Uh, and I'll show you real quickly. So I found this thing at a thrift store, uh, which which is pretty cool. So this is, uh, this looks like an old radio, uh, and it, it is somewhat old, uh, but let me show you. I'll put this on the workbench here to get a little better view of it. Uh, let me move this thing over. Okay, let's see if I can get a good workbench shot here. So we'll go there. So, okay, so you can see this thing here. Now, this is a reproduction of like a 1930s vintage Thomas, I think, radio. Uh, and it actually says right here, Thomas, uh, what does it say? I can't, uh, that is a collector's edition radio. Uh, now, this is not an original. I'm not going to hack up some, fan, you know, 1930s radio. That would be horrible. Uh, I looked on the back, and it actually, this was made in 1999. And the reason I know this is not from 1930, when I look over here, it has a tape deck on it. So neat, neat little feature. Oh, you can see what it is, 10 bucks uh, at a thrift store. So, you know, not super expensive, uh, but really beautiful look. Like this is made out of real wood. It's stained, uh, nice little dials and things here. I'm assuming this lights up. I haven't actually turned this thing on uh, because what I want to do is this would be the perfect host for a Raspberry Pi music player. Uh, so I could put the Raspberry Pi inside of here. It has a speaker behind here. You know, I could hook up our little I2S amplifier because there's only a single speaker. You know, these old style radios were monophonic. It was more for listening. Well, I guess, you know, AM radio was uh, monophonic back then anyway, so you didn't have stereo. Uh, so, and that's perfect for our I2S amp because it's a mono amplifier. Uh, even though you can play stereo signals, they just get mixed into one channel uh, for it. So I'll turn it over because I actually did open it up just to see kind of the insides of this thing. Uh, and it, it's not that complex, you know, it's it's uh, an AM FM radio from the late 90s. So, you know, it's uh, I haven't really dug into the circuit board back there, but you can see like some of the tuning logic and stuff. This right here is the tape deck. So, you know, my thought is I'm just going to rip everything out of here. And, you know, like I said, this is not a, an original 1930s vintage radio, so I don't feel bad doing that, uh, although it is in quite good condition. Uh, but the cool thing is you can see, so it's got a speaker right here and it's eight ohms, three watts. That's perfect. Uh, our little I2S amp is three watts and it works with eight ohm speakers. Uh, I don't think it does three watts into eight ohms, but this, this thing will be plenty loud enough, I'm sure, uh, to drive that little amplifier. And then what I'd love to do is I want to make sure that I can still use the original controls on the front here. You know, it's like the tuning dial, uh, but I need to think through like, what do I actually want to do with this thing? So I could run Volumio on this, um, in which case, you know, I'm not sure how these controls would really work. Like I could maybe map certain frequencies to like a favorite playlist or something and have it play that. Um, you know, I need some way to like, I'm assuming this is just a potentiometer inside of here. Uh, so I could probably hook up my own potentiometer and then I'd need a little analog to digital converter. Like I could use probably the, um, 
the MCP3008, which is a real simple little, I think it's a spy interface, uh, analog to digital converter. I have a Python library uh, that I made for it. So I could use that to read, you know, the potentiometer position uh, or resistance rather, and then figure out kind of roughly like what frequency you're pointing at and maybe have it switch to a different audio track based on that, uh, which uh, would I would need some API. I'm not sure if Lumio has an API to control it, uh, but that could be one option. Uh, the other thought I had for a project that might be fun that doesn't use Volumio, but it would be neat to turn this into like an all-in-one old-time radio player because it's, you know, it's in an old radio and you can go to archive.org, uh, you know, the internet archive. They have a collection of all kinds of old radio broadcasts from the 30s and 40s and 50s, like back from the golden age of uh, radio dramas where you didn't have television, you had radio. And so you had long form shows and dramas and things like that, science fiction, all kinds of cool stuff, crime uh, adventures. Uh, but it was all through the radio and there's all kinds of archives of that stuff. So it'd be kind of neat if like I set this up and you know, you'd pick your frequency. So like, you know, maybe frequency like 107 or something is the crime dramas and you know, frequency 102 is like sci-fi dramas. Uh, and maybe I could have like some sound effects uh, of it changing, you know, tuning as you, as you seek around on the dial here. And then if you, you know, you land on a frequency and maybe have it just start randomly playing a playlist of uh, old uh, radio dramas for, from a certain theme or something like that. Uh, so just a neat idea, something I might play with later. Uh, but one thing I wanted to do, so since I opened this thing up, uh, I realized it's really easy to get to the speaker on the back here. So let's just hook up my uh, speaker output from the I2S amp and put it into the, the speaker on this, uh, uh, on this little radio here. Oops, let me, I just disconnected the wrong thing. Okay, so I'll hook up the speaker connections. Uh, so I'll just hook up the positive to the positive and the ground to the ground. So, and uh, I probably should like turn off the Raspberry Pi, but hey, I'm, you know, I'm just gonna live on the edge here because I might short something out, but uh, I think we'll be okay. All right, so let me move around a little bit here. And I'm just gonna clip this onto the positive right there. And then I'll grab the negative lead. So this is the negative lead. And these are the outputs. I'll turn off my head image here too. So these are the outputs from the I2S amplifier. So you can see I have the positive one. I've just clipped onto the positive lead of the speaker. And then uh, the negative one, I'm just about to clip onto the negative lead of the speaker here. So I'll put that on. All right, so those are hooked up. And let's see, we'll turn this over just kind of carefully. And I don't actually have this uh, plugged in, so I don't need to because I'm just stealing uh, the speaker basically. And maybe I shouldn't power the speaker with everything else connected, but I think I'll be okay for a quick little demo here. So, okay, let me move this speaker out of the way there. So, okay, cool. Oh, this is the ampl uh, antenna for AM uh, radio, so. Again, I'm not gonna need that when I take this apart uh, and build this project. Okay, so I've got it hooked up and uh, I, I played it earlier. It's really loud because again, I mentioned I don't have volume control. So I'm just gonna hit play uh, for a second here and let's see, let me put my uh, headshot back in the image and let's see if this plays. So I'll hit the play button. Oh yeah. Sound, sounds pretty nice, it's loud. Little bit of distortion because I think it's uh, jacked up to the max volume, so I, I probably don't want to play it for too long. Uh, but it's got some bass to it uh, when you you know cover it up. Uh, it's got a nice big cavity in there to resonate a little bit with. So I think this will be kind of cool. Uh, so just a little preview maybe of a future project. Turn this into a Pi internet radio, and I'm pretty sure we have a couple, maybe two or three Pi internet radio projects already in the, the, uh, the learning system. So, you know, I might base this on an existing one, but Volumio, as I showed before, let's see, I'll switch back to the main view. You know, very nice. This looks like the perfect thing. If you have a Raspberry Pi and you want to turn it into a little network audio player, I would definitely check out Volumio. Uh, you know, it looks like this RC2 of the version 2.0 is pretty nice. And it looks like it's pretty close to, to being ready. I mean, there are some little bugs and things that I noticed. Uh, but it looks like it's uh, it's almost there, and so I, I would definitely check this out uh, when they release it. So otherwise, uh, folks have questions, throw them into the chat. 
Uh, I noticed uh, someone asks, what's a Pi? So uh, if you're new to the channel, this is uh, the channel for Adafruit. So we build all kinds of electronics uh, kits and, and hardware and things to help people learn electronics. Check out Adafruit.com. The Pi is a Raspberry Pi. So it's a little small board computer. It's actually this green thing right here. This is an entire Linux computer uh, for $35. And I'm running this software on it that lets you turn it into an audio player. So all kinds of cool stuff uh, that you can see. Look at raspberrypi.org and you can find all kinds of details on the Pi. Uh, or learn.adafruit.com and look at uh, the Raspberry Pi stuff. There's good stuff there. Uh, let's see. So I don't see a lot of questions. So I'll jump back to the main view uh, of just me real quick. Uh, and so I'll wrap up the stream then. So this is a quick look at Volumio 2.0, the RC2, Release Candidate 2. So it's not released yet, but it looks like it's pretty close. It's a great system from what I see for turning a Raspberry Pi into a dedicated network audio player. So you do want to have like at least a hard drive full of music files that you can connect to the Pi, like a USB hard drive, or network storage, like Windows or NFS file shares that have uh, music. But uh, once you've got that, it looks like you can point the Volumio uh, system at, the, at your files, and it will find all the albums and, and give you a nice little web interface that works great on phones and tablets and mobile devices and things like that. Uh, so definitely check it out. Uh, and uh, otherwise, then I'll wrap this up. So check out twitch.tv slash Adafruit. That's where I stream things live like this. And we have all kinds of live shows throughout the week. So there's Desk of Lady Ada and No One Page Around Layer by Layer with 3D printing. Uh, and then check out youtube.com slash Adafruit. That's where I'll put up this video so you can watch it offline or later, not live at least. Uh, and we have all kinds of projects and other videos that go up on our YouTube channel. So check that out. Uh, and then otherwise, just like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let us know if this is interesting stuff and we'll keep doing it. And then I like to do a couple different live streams every week. So I do one on Monday like this where I do a quick look at software. And then I do a Friday live stream where I go more in depth. And I've got some fun ideas. I'm gonna start a new series uh, this week on uh, a, a more of a project-based thing. So I've got a good idea for a fun project I wanna revisit. Uh, and I'm thinking this week I might actually stream on Thursday instead of Friday because we've got this long uh, 4th of July weekend coming up, so I might be busy Friday. Uh, so check out, you know, keep your eyes peeled Thursday uh, afternoon, evening, I might do a stream. Uh, and it'll always go up on YouTube later so you can see it. Uh, but otherwise, this is Tony from Adafruit, so I'm going to turn off the stream. Thanks a lot for checking out Volumio and the, the Raspberry Pi Quick Look. So until next time, this is Tony from Adafruit.